So this is one of our sugar apple trees. It's not looking at its best right now, and that's because of the cold weather. There's a lot of leaf damage. Some of the leaves have dropped, and then you, there's brown around the edges of the leaves. Basically, it looks like it's been beaten up. Uh, you'll notice that the leaves on the interior of the tree, those are a lot greener. It could be because it's more protected from the cold weather, it's lower down, big winds are not hitting it as much. But anyway, sugar apple can look a lot worse than this and still survive. Mature trees can take temperatures sometimes down as low as 26 degrees before they're killed. And of course, we just had a cold spell in the 30s. So anyway, this is very typical. It's actually um, been a not terribly cold winter. So we still have leaves, but it looks like this tree is struggling. So this is another sugar apple tree, exactly the same variety that, as the one we just saw. They are both red sugar apples, and this one is looking a lot better. It's got a lot more leaves, and the leaves are actually green. There's very few that have dropped. So even though this tree is like 50 feet away from the previous tree, this one looks tons better. So why is that? Well, there's three reasons right next to it. This mango tree, this mango tree, and then there's a mango tree on the other side of it. And those trees are providing protection for this tree. So we had these cold snaps and what these trees did was prevent the cold winds from really uh, you know, blowing on these leaves. And it's the combination of the cold temperatures and the wind that really can wreak havoc on the anonas. Of course, anonas can lose every leaf on them and still be alive, but it's nice to see you know, the, the tree not being stressed by losing a lot of its leaves. So, what lesson can we learn from this situation? <laughs> of course, location matters. It matters if, it has, if your sugar apple or any other cold sensitive plant has little buddies, little plant buddies to help protect it from the cold winds. Uh, if you are in the situation where you don't have those types of plants around, you consider planting your sugar apple or other cold sensitive plant on the south or east side of your house. Uh, that way your house is actually protecting the plant from those cold winds. And another thing that you can do is try and make sure that your sugar apple or any cold sensitive plant is as healthy as possible during the summer. If you have a healthy plant going into the winter, it's much better for the plant. And also, if you are able to provide minerals to the plant, you know, calcium, for instance, other minerals are good too. The plant is actually taking up those minerals when it's getting water from the ground, and that uh, reduces the plant's cold sensitivity. But remember, don't fertilize with nitrogen in the winter or even going into the winter. You do not want a bunch of new growth on the plant. Uh, you don't want it to be in an active growth stage going into cold weather. So we've come to Harmadim's home because he has a good selection of anonas and he knows a lot about anonas. And Today, we're particularly interested in cold weather damage and associated damage to the sugar apple and its relatives. This tree is kind of a distant relative of sugar apple. It's the Rolinia deliciosa, or delicious Rolinia, uh, which some botanists are now calling Anona mucosa. I object, but anyway, you should know the current botanical name. This 
curling of the leaves and discoloration is caused not by cold weather but by potato leaf hoppers, little green leaf hoppers. It doesn't take many of them to cause this toxic reaction on the tree. So, uh, do Rolinia die at any certain temperature? That I mean, obviously yours have not died, so um, they're good into the 30s at least. At least some varieties of Rolinia, uh, which the species is native to South America, some varieties at least grow all the way down into northern Argentina, which is definitely temperate zone. So although if a tree is very young or is still in a very juicy stage, it can be hurt by freezing weather it actually can take down into the mid-twenties pretty well and can survive if it's big and tough even below that and sprout back up again even if most of the tree gets killed back. So northern Argentina is definitely not part of the ideal range for this species but people do grow it down there. So here in Florida, people do grow the Rolinia all over the southern and central parts of the state. Okay, so this is a soursop tree. And it's doing darn well considering the cool temperatures that we've had. Yes, these marks on the leaf are cold damage. If this tree were on the west or north side of the house, there wouldn't be any leaves left on here at all. But because it's right close to the east side of the house and was protected from the wind, uh, it has most of its leaves still on there, even if some of them aren't looking their best anymore. Uh, that is important because soursop are evergreen. They don't like cold wind at all. The tree, interestingly, can take a light freeze if it's out of the wind. A tree in the wind will defoliate in the low 40s. The tree has no sense. It does not stay dormant after all the leaves get knocked off. It immediately leaves out again. And if you get another cold snap like that, those leaves get killed. It'll leaf out again. It never learns. Uh, those leaves get zapped. After four or five zappings, uh, the tree has no more buds or energy left and dies from exhaustion without ever having gotten down into frost territory. So by keeping the northwest wind off your tree by planting close to the east or south side of a house or a tall hedge or any other sort of adequate windbreak will make the whole difference into whether or not you can get a soursop to survive in your yard anywhere here in southern Florida. Even down in the Keys it gets cold enough to defoliate soursop if they're in full wind. This is what we in Florida call custard apple. You should be aware that English speakers in other countries uh, call any kind of anona custard apples. But here in Florida we use that term specifically for anona reticulata, uh, which is also known as bullock's heart or in Spanish, corazón, which means heart, and in several other languages, equivalent names also referring to hearts because the fruit are the size, shape, and sometimes the color of an ox heart. On these leaves, you can see the same uh, potato leaf hopper damage that we were looking at on the Rolinia deliciosa, the delicious Rolinia. The custard apple 
will usually drop its leaves in mid to late winter. This is just barely starting to drop its leaves and they should be all fallen off by late March or early April and there should already be new growth coming out at about the same time that the last of the raggedy old leaves fall off. Custard apple apparently are native in a part of Central America where there's a pretty long dry season but also some cool weather so going leafless is an adaptation for dry weather and not necessary if you have warm temperatures all year around. However, the tree may not flower if it keeps all its leaves on. Uh, flowering occurs on new little branches and the buds for those new little branches are actually under uh, the leaves, uh, the stems of the leaves. Some if your custard apple tree your Anona reticulata tree is losing leaves in January or February. It's just doing what it's supposed to. Maybe a month sooner than you would like, but sometime in late February or March, it should be dropping its leaves. Uh, it's nice if the tree can wait till then to drop its leaves because whatever fruits are on the tree will ripen up and be sweeter uh, if uh, there are still leaves on the branches. And the reason we're talking about that is that unlike most any of the other Anona species, these do ripen fruit in late winter and spring. February, March, or April, or sometimes early May, depending on the variety and the weather that year. These can take uh, well below freezing temperatures in at least the upper 20s or mid 20s. The same variety, the same species can take different amounts of cold, one or two degrees difference depending on fertilization and dormancy. If it's been getting too much nitrogen and too much water and is full of juicy new growth, it is much more susceptible to cold damage. If it doesn't have those and it does have a high supply of potassium and calcium and other minerals, then the higher mineralized sap can take cold to a degree or two lower without freezing. Same as seawater doesn't freeze as soon as fresh water because of the higher mineral content of the water. So this is an Atomoya. It's uh, what, what variety is it? This is an unnamed variety. Atemoyas are one subcategory of Anona hybrids. Many of the Anona species can be bred with each other, so one can get interspecific hybrids of various types. Atemoya refers specifically to Anona hybrids that include only the two species, Anona squamosa and Anona cherimola. In other words, sugar apple and cherry moya. So the atemoya takes a little more cold than sugar apple because its parent, the cherry moya, can take more cold than sugar apples. Nevertheless, atemoyas are expected to lose their leaves in late winter. Uh, this one really hasn't started to drop its leaves yet. If it doesn't drop its leaves by March, then I can prune anyway and strip any remaining leaves after uh, most of them have been just pruned off. On the new growth, the flowers come. 
uh, Tamoya's fruit in the fall or early winter. You can see the same potato leaf hopper damage on these leaves as we saw on the custard apple and on the delicious Rolinia. Here are a couple sugar apple trees and I pulled them out so that you could see they don't have many leaves. But actually, these trees look pretty good for sugar apple trees in pots in the winter. They still have some green leaves. A lot of times in the winter, you have zero leaves on these anonas. If your plant doesn't happen to have leaves on them, don't worry, it's still alive, it's just dormant. Uh, if you have a tree in a pot, a young tree in the pot, and you're thinking about planting it in your yard, look at the forecast. Look at the next 10 days. They're pretty accurate out to 10 days. If you are going to get freezing temperatures, don't plant it in the ground yet. You, you can take these potted plants inside. It's really okay. And you know, let it have sort of a nice chance at a mellow place to um, be. And then once the threat of cold weather passes, you can plant it in the ground. Young trees, are not as tolerant of cold weather as the older trees are. These plants could be killed by freezing temperatures, even like 31 degrees. And the older trees can withstand maybe 26 degree weather. 